broadcast today. It's a little different today. We're not in the studio because of icy conditions here and there. Uh, here in northeast Texas in some of our shady areas, uh, but because of technology and new little gimmicks and gadgets that man comes up with, we can be here and we can record in my office today, and uh, I hope you're hearing this. I hope you're getting this. Uh, I hope it's not too loud. I hope it's loud enough. I hope uh, uh, that everything is going to work good today, but we are in the book of uh, Galatians, where we've been now for this is our 10th session uh, today on January the 12th, 2018, uh, and we are still in chapter 1 uh, and excited to be in the Word of God, learning uh, to hear from the Lord so we can allow Him uh, to process His Word in our hearts, to uh, train us up in equip us in the way we should be going. And God has a purpose for all of our lives. And, and we'll never find that purpose outside of getting in the Word of God, learning to hear from the Spirit of God, be led by the Spirit of God. And that only happens, my friends, as we keep our faith in what Christ did for us at Calvary. Uh, before we dig in this morning, I, as always, would like to share the little book that I wrote last year, All God's Works Are Done in Truth, derived from Psalms 33 and 4. Uh, if you would like a copy of this book, it's only $15 to help the ministry do what we do here. Uh, you can just go to our website, thecrosswaychurch.com, and hit the donate button and send the money. We'll send you the book. Or you can mail the finances to uh, 610 Highway 59, Queen City, Texas, 75572. Again, that's 610 Highway 59, Queen City, Texas, 75572. I promise you this little booklet here will relay the scriptures to you, not man's opinion. And scripture will define scripture and you will uh, see a lot of confusion leaving your heart and a lot of clarity by the Holy Spirit bringing clarity into your heart uh, when you read this and scripture d uh, rightly divided, will the Holy Spirit will use it to bless us and teach us even more. So today uh, we're in Galatians chapter 1 and we uh, started, I think we left off last week in verse 14 and it's kind of comfortable this week sitting here in my chair. I might, I don't know about this, it's kind of comfortable. <laughs> and uh, so, but it's, it's really cold here, the wind's blowing and I know it's not what it is in places like Ohio and up north and I thank God it's not. Good old Texas boy, but but here we are, and I praise God. So in verse 15, the Bible says, But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. And we're going to talk about that just for a few minutes. Uh, because whenever we see in the Word of God where God's Word says it pleased God, you always have to go to the 11th chapter of Hebrews where the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. So whenever God is pleased, when it's dealing with man, it's because there's some kind of, there, there's, there's faith in the heart of man in operation. Uh, so when we see here that it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, remember we're saved by grace through faith the works of the Holy Spirit that are done in and through our lives are done by grace, through faith. Anything that God has done and will do in and through our lives will be by us surrendering in an humble manner, faith in the sacrifice, and He Himself will be doing the works through us, and that is what pleases Him. It takes faith to him. And can I say today that faith without obedience is not faith at all. Faith always brings about obedience in our lives. Faith is an action word. It's a verb. If there's true faith, there will be a true action of the Holy Spirit in our lives and His fruit will be seen. And Paul here, he's saying when it pleased God, God was pleased to separate Paul from his mother's womb and, and to him by his grace. Can I say that every person who's ever been born again, and we can confirm this in scripture, and we will in just a minute, every person who's ever been born again was called by the Lord into the grace of Christ. And I'll, I'll share that with you this morning. It's in Galatians 1 and 6, just a few verses prior to this, a few sessions ago, we covered this. 
and that is in verse 6 of this same chapter. And really, the Holy Spirit is saying through Paul to the churches in Galatia, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Here we see that where God called us was into His grace, the grace of Christ. And, and we know how that entrance uh, uh, was uh, experienced because the Bible says in Hebrews 2 and 9 that Jesus, by the grace of God, tasted death for every man. So the same death he tasted, we enter into him, we're immersed, baptized into his death as we're called by the gospel of Jesus Christ into this grace. The same grace that Jesus died by is the same grace that you and I, by faith in his death, experienced that death with him. We were crucified with him. We're talking about in the mind and the plan of God, the identification, representation process. Christ identified with all of humanity there. All sin was placed upon him. And he did that, the Bible says, by grace. And therefore, when we place our faith in him, what he did by grace, we get that same grace. We're saved by that same grace. It is the only avenue by which grace can flow. It's the only avenue by which grace can call. And Paul here, he says, and what he's doing here, he's he's continuing to confirm his calling because he is having to battle against those who would come along and say that he's not of God. And then in the church, he was having to struggle among even the brethren uh, because they were actually going and believing that false, those false things that were said about him, that he wasn't one of the disciples, that he wasn't there, and he wasn't one of the original 12, and all these things, and he used to kill Christians, and now this, and now that. And and he was not only having to uh, stand against what was outside of true faith, he was having to take a stand and be determined among the true church. And that's the way it is when you're walking even in the truth today. You must stand and there will always be opposition from without, but I promise you the focus of God is the, is the opposition that comes from within the church because His God's business to the world is only one thing and that's getting them saved. God's business in the church is keeping order in the church, keeping us in a sanctified process, living for him, his fruit being seen, not us, his fruit being seen. And that can't happen, my friend, if if we move away from the process that God has given us, the order that he's given us. And 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 Paul here, we have to we have to recognize that Paul was called of God, that what he had, God gave him. And no matter what men come along and say, that's just the way it is. Paul was the one that God gave the revelation of the cross. Peter even acknowledged in his writing that some of Peter, some of Paul's writings were were hard to understand, and so, but he, but Peter even refers to them as scriptures. He relates them to other scriptures. So uh, you know what? You can't rip Romans, and you can't rip everything out out of the Bible Paul wrote, and you can't even say Paul missed it because when you say that, you're saying God missed it because God's the one who gave Paul what he had. And if you begin saying, well, God really didn't give Paul what he had, what he wrote, you know, then you are a part of the Jews' religion. You're a part of the Judaizers who are still today following Paul around saying he really didn't have it. He he really didn't quite understand. And I promise you, my friend, that's not of God. What Paul wrote in this Bible is what the Holy Spirit wrote to us through Paul in this Bible. And that's just the way it is. You can believe that or forget it. You can walk away, but if you walk away, your life will become miserable and you will be without what you need. I guarantee it. God does not work in our lives just any way. He does not work in our lives in spite of whatever we want to believe. And this is why the whole letter to the churches in Galatia was written, which is so relevant for today, that if you move your faith from the cross, again, in in the sixth verse of this first chapter, he said, I marvel that you so soon removed yourself from him. We remove ourselves from him. Yes, we are identified with him in heaven. We're at the right hand of the Father in Christ and he is our righteousness and our representation. But on this earth right now, that is an entirely different thing. We can have the benefits and the effects, the 
the, the positive effects of the cross of Christ if we keep our faith therein. If we move it to things we do, then we find ourselves eventually not even believing that Paul really had from God what he says he had, and it just goes further and further into darkness. But here in, in 15th verse, he says that he, he was called from his mother's womb, separated from his mother's womb. This means that Paul has recognized something that we need to recognize today, our own selves, and that God has called us even from our mother's womb, that no matter all the horrible life you or I may have had, it did not erase God's plan. Paul, when he was Saul and killing and, and pr imprisoning families and ripping their their, their lives apart because they confessed Christ as Lord. Listen, God knew he would do all that, but here Paul still testifies. God still had called me from my mother's womb, had separated me for this, for such a time as this. And you know what? That's good news to me. Because no matter how many years you've thrown away in ugly sin and misery, today, if you will just accept that God is calling you through His Son Jesus, His sacrifice, into His grace, He will face everything in your past and set your feet on the path that He has for you. And I promise you, my friend, there's great hope there, great peace, great freedom, and everything you're looking for will be found on that path in which He leads. And that's what Paul is saying. He's trying to get the church here in Galatia to understand, and us today, that no matter what he's done in the past, no matter what kind of rocks they're throwing at him based on what he's done in the past, God's not looking back. He's acknowledging the same thing that Jeremiah acknowledged, and that was that I was set apart from my mother's womb. And I have that scripture here. I want to read to you that in the book of Jeremiah, and it's chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, speaking of himself, Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. You know what God has told Jeremiah is the same thing he revealed to Paul, and I promise revealing to you today that no matter what you've done in the past, if you'll come to Christ, if you will come to Him into this grace that forgives sins, that, that gives us power where sin no longer dominates, and also gifts us for the work of God in our lives, you can live for God. You can be a servant of God. You can be a minister to the degree in which He's called you because God is not basing what He in your life today on anything in your past, just on your acceptance of who Christ is for you, your Savior, your Lord, the one who will now save you and work in you and bear fruit in you by His Spirit. And Paul here is trying to get the church here in Galatia to see that, listen, I've been separated by God from my mother's womb. I don't care what happened in the past. God has called me by His grace by His grace. And that's, again, let me repeat it, that's where we've all been called as Christians is into the grace of Christ. We read it in verse 6 of this chapter. We've been called into the grace of Christ. Why is that the place we've been called? Because that's the place God works. God only works. God's grace is God at work, and He only works in the truth. The truth is Jesus and what He did at Calvary. Paul had a revelation of that, that if you remove yourself from this truth that saved you and you go back with them believing in and today it could be you believing water baptism saves or, or you, the words you speak brings the power and the provision or you have to get in one of these books, uh, the purpose driven, the Emmaus walk. You have to do these things they would tell us today. And what happens when we go that way, we say we don't take faith from the cross, but we do. You can't have your faith in the cross and stuff you're doing. So it's either God did it, Jesus finished it at the cross and we believe that and we just trust in that and walk in His finished work to see His fruit. Or we keep trusting every year in new books, men, men write, and we keep trusting in those things that we think we have to do to make our salvation complete or to find the power and the provision of God and we move ourselves from this grace. What does that mean? From the place where God works. And we'll see that in the fifth chapter of this very book in verses 1 through 4. But Paul here, he's, he's, he's trying to get the church to see, listen, you ought to know 
that my calling is right. You ought to know God set me apart from my mother's womb. You ought to know that I was called in the grace because it's the same grace that saved you. You know, and that's pretty powerful. Isn't it strange how God can use men and women in our lives and to usher the gospel to us and we believe it and we're saved through their ministry and, and we continue to this gospel, and then all of a sudden one day they hate us. They don't want anything to do with us, you know, and I'm amazed at that. You know, uh, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the Lord has used Brother Swaggart, Jimmy Swaggart. Uh, mi countless millions have been saved, and some people just cringe at his name. And, it, and it's people who are doing something God would never do. They, they, hold, they hold us in our past, and God says, look, we're not living in our yesterdays. We're living in today. Now faith is. Will you let faith be now for you? Faith forgives others. Faith, if you can't forgive others, then you can't move forward in your life. It's all make believe and pretend for you. So, and you know, and so many people have been brought back to the message of the cross who were wayward, like I used to be, through Brother Swaggart's ministry there in Louisiana. And then so many people, after they come back, God has used it. And then they turn against them and, and just, you know, the enemy will come in like a flood of man start causing envy and strife and jealousy and bless God and all. The, I can't have that. All, all these things, we let the flesh take over. And so we need to be careful. We need to think about where we are, why we're thinking, what we're thinking. And we need to stay faithful to God and faithful to each other. Amen? And that's what was lacking here. These people had stopped being faithful to what uh, Paul had taught them. And they were uh, being told that Paul really didn't tell you everything that was right. Just like some of the churches today. Paul really didn't know it like he thinks he did. And, and some churches teach that if Paul would have had the faith we have today, that, that he wouldn't have suffered so much. And let let me tell you, that's farther, that's farther from reality than they could ever know. The, I'm going to tell you this, the more your faith is actually working and, and you're living for God, the closer you are. The Bible says that those who uh, uh, shall, what does the Bible say about those who live in Christ, they shall suffer uh, 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 persecution. They that live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Amen. It's for righteousness sake that the suffering comes. Everybody in town likes you. You ain't in the path of righteousness, my friend. So he says he's called by his grace, that, that Paul was called to this grace for this purpose. And uh, he, he declares that God has called him and given him his ministry having purposed this specific calling even from his mother's womb, was he set apart for such a time as this. And let me read this so I don't forget anything today. This means that God knew every step Saul, Paul would have ever taken and all that he would be involved in, even the wrong. I've already said this. But would turn it all around, redeeming him by grace, not only for his good and for the good of others, but for the glory of God. And can I add this today, that whatever God is doing in your life is not only for you, it's for others, and above all, it's for the glory of God. Whatever God is doing in your life is not just for you. Just like ministers, uh, the gifts that God has given the church as prophets, evangelists, apostles, teachers, pastors, uh, these things, those are not... We're not gifts for us. We're gifts for the body. A gift is to be given. God gifts certain people and they're to be given. And if that gift is not being used to bless the people, if it's not you being used for the edification and the maturity and the equipping of the church, then God can't be glorified through this gift. Ultimately, everything's for God's glory. And Paul, I think he knew that. If these if the church gets off track, not only will they be devastated and reap death and destruction through living after the flesh instead of the spirit, but God also can't be glorified. And we ought to be living our lives seeking to give God glory with all that we do, everything we do as unto the Lord. The, the, the words we speak, even the thoughts that we think. And you might, well, I can't control my thoughts. You can't control what comes in, but you can control what you do with it when it comes in because because the Bible says we're to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That means bringing our, our, our focus back to his obedience unto death on the cross so that
that the Lord can deal with us in the way he needs to. If you don't do that, my friend, if you don't know that, your thoughts can run you into a place and five years later, you'll wake up in the penitentiary and say, how did I get here, God? But I'm telling you today, God wants you to uh, keep your faith in the cross so that when your thoughts begin to go uh, wayward, he can grab a hold of you and say, hey, don't go that way. And the Holy Spirit will do that. Amen. Praise God. He says in verse 16 here, and I really like this next verse because he says, uh, uh, to reveal his son in me. Do you see what the grace of God does? It begin as soon as you're saved, it's not, and here's where we've missed it for many, many, many years. Uh, we, we, we have come into the faith. We've been born again. We've come into the church. And now preachers and teachers and youth leaders are all about you finding your destiny, your fate, your, your purpose. Can I tell you that what God called you into this grace for was to reveal His Son Jesus in you? That's why He saved us, not to reveal us to the world, but to reveal His Son Jesus in us. And the more he's revealed in us, watch what this scripture says, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him. My goodness, that's good right there. Because when we're allowing the Lord to reveal his son in us, we will preach. We may not be pulpit preachers, but our lives will preach the gospel. Our lives will speak. Our words will be seasoned with the grace of God. Everything about us will point to the God we're serving. We Listen, you, you don't have to get in a pulpit to preach Christ. You share Christ with your families. You share Christ with those you work with in the marketplace, everywhere you go. And not just words. We must tell them. Yes, we must. But with our lives, we live the gospel. And, and because Christ is being revealed to us, in us, then the more He's revealed to us, in us, the more we can bring forth his fruit. You see, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, and we studied it over the last year, that we will shine as lights. We will represent him as trophies of God's grace throughout all eternity. But notice that it's his grace. I'm not going to represent him as Curtis throughout all eternity. I'm going to represent his grace. That means what he did for me. It's all about the Lord. It's not all about me and you. It's not all about the church. It's all about Jesus and what he would do for us. And throughout all eternity, we will represent who he is and what he's done for us to give us this grace, to call us by this grace, to labor in us and through us by this grace, and to reveal himself to us by this grace so that we can preach him by this grace. See, by, you, you always have to say by the grace of God because that means God doing it, God at work. And just saying that don't mean it'll happen, but uh, trusting in the cross of Christ where that grace can continue to flow into your life, Christ can continue to be revealed unto you. And we see that in the scriptures. To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. You see here again, he reminds the church in Galatia and us today. I like to always add that because this is not just written to the churches in Galatia, but also to us. He's reminding all of us that as soon as he began to see Jesus being revealed in him, he began to preach among the heathen. And he says, I did not run to try to go to school to try to learn this from man. I didn't go. Flesh, but I didn't run to Peter and those who had walked with him, those who had <coughs> even performed miracles. Do you know Peter not only walked on the water, but the twelve were sent. They cast out devils. They worked miracles. But you know what? You got to think about that today. Even though Paul had heard about all that, he knew all that, the Holy Spirit would not let him go to them because they could not teach him what the Lord wanted him to have. And I know there's a lot of lone rangers out there today that say, well, I'm not going to read uh, Brother Swaggart's commentaries. I'm not going to read Brother So-and-So's commentaries. I'm not going to go to church and be under a preacher because God is just like Paul is going to give me the revelation. Sorry, sorry, doesn't work anymore like that. God 
has chosen to give Paul the revelation of the cross, the meaning of the new covenant. And listen, you, you sitting at home uh, without being taught by a minister today, I I'm not going to say that you can't grow, but I'm going to say the purpose of God is to be under a, one of these gifts that can relate the gospel to you. And God's not going to reveal the gospel to you like he did Paul without the help of what he gave Paul. He gave it to Paul for a purpose. And that was to give to you. It's a part of the canon of Scripture. Will you receive it? You sitting at home, I promise you, uh, you sitting at home, uh, you, without the Bible, you're not just going to have a revelation uh, like Paul had, more than likely, because, I'm, well, not more than likely, you're not going to get it because God's already gave it to Paul. And here Paul is trying to get us to know he didn't go to flesh and blood to give this revelation. He didn't go. Well, he did. He came to me, Paul said, but he didn't go to the apostles. He didn't go to those people. And I don't know if you've ever thought about this very much, but I'm going to say this again. The Holy Spirit would not let Paul go to Peter and James and John and those who had seen things that we've never seen, things that were miraculous and amazing at the hands and the words of Jesus Christ. But the, but, but the Holy Spirit had something for Paul that we all need, even Peter needed, even all the disciples needed, and that is the definition, the revelation, Revelation, the illumination of what really happened on the cross. How we were crucified with Christ in our identity with Him, His representation of us, and that through faith in that we can be born again and sin no longer will have dominion over us if we keep our faith there in the difference between grace and law and church order. And all these things were taught Paul and the disciples didn't have that. They didn't know these things. And God gave it to Paul, and he's here telling them that the reason that he calls us into the grace of Christ is so that he might reveal Christ in us. Not church denominationalism, not the way of some other man, but the Jesus. If Jesus is not being revealed to us, in us, we're off track. It's that plain. It's that simple. If that's not what we're learning, then we're learning wrong stuff. I know men that travel the globe and teach on marriage and ch ch raising children. And listen, it's all a waste of time, my friend. They've wasted years at telling men what they ought to do, women what they ought to do. And Children, how they are, and they use scripture, but the scripture won't work unless it's seen in light of Calvary, and our faith is in Calvary. When my faith is even in, listen, when my faith is in what the Bible says, and I'm out doing what the Bible says, but my faith is no, not in Christ and his sacrifice, the Bible cannot be my perfect law of liberty. God's word won't work outside of faith in the cross. If you think it can if you disagree you're living in witchcraft and voodoo god's word will only prosper and return to him in the way that he sent it to prosper and that's in the hearts of the of of, of his people but greater than that that the really the big picture and revelation of that is jesus the living word came and offered the prosperity of god's mercy and grace at the cross and because he did he could go home and be seated back with the father at his right hand and have the glory he had from the beginning and god's word returned and it was not void when he sent his son jesus the living word to to give to us what we needed, it now has given us and prospered us in all that we need. And when he went home, he did not return empty. Many sons and daughters now will follow him home. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's good stuff right there. My goodness. Uh, so if it's not Jesus being revealed in us, we're off track. And the humble heart will have to come back to faith and grace. You see, Peter wrote and said this, that we're to be growing in the knowledge and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So what are you, what are you growing in? 
Is it your knowledge of Jesus? Is Jesus being revealed more in you? And I know the thought process that would say, I already know he saved me. I already know he worked miracles. I already know he's at the right hand of the Father. I already know this and that and this and that about Jesus. What more is there? Listen, to, to grow in the... I'm going I'm to share something with you this morning you desperately need. I, I pray you already know it, but if you don't, I pray you get it. And if you have it, I pray you get it more concretely today. And, and, and more in your heart than ever before. To grow in the knowledge and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is to be born again. You're born again. It's the only way you can grow if you're already born again, you're saved. And your faith is in Christ and what He did at Calvary, and it remains there. And so God then, and then alone, can teach you the Word in truth and Everything he shows you is for you to see Christ in you so that Christ can bear fruit by his spirit through you. And that can't happen until you surrender to what he is showing you, who he is in you, and how what he wants to do through you. You humble yourself, keeping your faith in the grace, in the grace of God, the cross of Christ. It's the only place to humble yourself before God is through faith in the cross. And there, God's grace begins to work. And, I, and, and we clarify that here at Crossway Church in our teaching that because if we don't, Christians just think that's just poof, God gives, poof, God gives you some grace. No, God's grace is God at work. So he gives us knowledge through his word, and our faith stands in the blood of Jesus. That means we remain humble and allow the Holy Spirit now to work that knowledge, to engraft it in our heart, to conform us into the image of Christ by His grace. That means He's the one working. He's the one conforming. He's the one changing us as we go from faith to faith and we're being changed in the image of of Jesus Christ. That's growing in the knowledge and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He gives you truth. You have to humble yourself through faith in the cross and allow Him to work that truth into your life. Hebrews 5 bears this out because they're scolded, they're chastened, they're reprimanded for remaining babes, babies. Nothing wrong with being a baby Christian, but if that's where you are after a long period of time, then I'm, I hate to say it this morning, but you're retarded. And it's because you have rejected to grow exercising your senses by the word of righteousness. That means the word of truth. That means being changed. We're growing in the knowledge what the Lord's teaching us about who Christ is and Christ's will in us, what He wants to do in us and through us, and then allowing him to do that, which he cannot do except faith in the cross. Through faith in the cross, because he only works in truth. Psalms 33, 4. Truth is Jesus and what he did at Calvary. My faith stays there. He can teach me the truth of his word. He can lead me in the truth of his word. He can't do that, my friend. Because remember, Paul wrote to this same church in chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, and said, Christ can't affect you. He can't profit you because you've fallen from grace. And if you've fallen from grace, think about this. If you've fallen from grace because your faith is not in the cross alone, there is no mixture. If you've fallen from grace, you've fallen from the place where Christ can teach you because He can't affect you. He, he can't profit you. The word profit means He can't bring increase. There can be no more learning because God won't keep teaching somebody that refuses to accept what He's giving and to allow Him to grow them, to work His grace into their lives. And Jesus taught that those who have more will be given. Not talking about you got two houses, he'll give you three. In the context of that scripture, he's talking about those who have hearing, those who will receive the word of God as their wisdom, their knowledge, their literally their way of living, humble themselves, let the Holy Spirit work that grace, work that power for change, conformation into their lives. He will give you more. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's good stuff today. Praise the Lord. He says here in uh, uh, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. And so again, let's say before we get a little deeper in this uh, scripture here, Paul wanted everybody to know that he is the only one God gave this revelation. Now God's given millions this revelation since then, but, he, but it has only come through what he gave Paul to put in the scriptures. And I'm excited about that. Every single day of my life, I thank God for what he gave Paul to give me. 
He gave it to Paul to give me. Amen. You know there's some people that just won't receive a gift. If I, if I gave Gladys this morning, who's here with us, and Chastity's here this morning, if I gave Gladys a gift to give Chastity, but Chastity didn't want to accept it from Gladys because, bless God, if he wants to give me a gift, he'll give it to me himself. <laughs> and people like that. You know, I, and I said it while ago, I ain't, I ain't, Paul ain't giving me nothing. If God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. Sorry, that's not the way God's plan has worked. You know, just like salvation, you're not getting saved. If you're waiting on God to send another Savior outside of Jesus, you're not getting saved. And when you die, you won't make heaven. You'll be in a lake of fire eternally. You know, I said, well, what about the Jews? They didn't accept Christ. They'll accept the same Jesus that died on the cross later on in their time of great trouble, the Bible says. It's not going to be a different man. It's going to be the same man with the hole still in his hands and side, and they're going to accept this same Jesus. You're going to get it God's way, or you're not going to get it, my friend. Humility gets rid of pride and says, okay, God, I'll accept what you did for me in your son Jesus. And you see, when we talk about God giving it to Paul to give to us, you still can't get it. I still can't have it unless I'm accepting it from the Lord through Paul. It's like going to church. Man, if all you hear is the preacher talking and you're not hearing God through that vessel, you're not going to get anything. Nothing at all. We have to want to hear God, accept the word of God in truth, go beyond the minister's you have to go beyond Paul. You know, the, the Lord gave this revelation to Paul. Paul didn't make it up. Paul didn't come up with this. He didn't go out to the Arabia for three years and say, let me come up with something good. I'll use it. No, the Holy Spirit. Paul said, we looked at it last week, he received the gospel by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that's the only way God's going to give anybody any knowledge concerning His Word at all. Because Jesus said the Scriptures were about Him. Glory to God. Man, things get a whole lot easier when you just come back to kindergarten and quit trying to make it so hard. Quit trying to uh, get up and graduate high school. God don't want you to stay down here on the simple level. He wants you to stay down here where uh, it's just like childlike faith. I just believe every verse in the Bible is about Jesus. He said the scriptures were about him. And even those scriptures that seem to be about uh, uh, Israel and this and that and the New Testament, I'm telling you the whole Bible's about Jesus. He is the living word of God. I've accepted and I'm telling you, uh, it's just so simple uh, to put it all on Jesus. That's why he came and died, so you can just put everything on him. We're not meant to carry anything beyond the cross. Hallelujah. We bring all our trash, all our garbage, all our problems and sins, everything that we just can't, man, we can't handle it. We got fear and doubt and unbelief and oppression and depression. We just bring it to the cross, and when we walk away from there, we walk away without any of that. Hallelujah. You're not meant to carry anything past the cross. And if you do, you'll be the one carrying it, my friend, and it'll kill you. Jesus has got his arms wide open, but he's only accepting all your garbage at Calvary. Hallelujah. That's where he'll take it. Praise God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1 9 says this God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I want to bring this scripture in. Again, it's 1 Corinthians 1 and 9 that says God is faithful whom you were called unto the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's only in this fellowship with Him, Jesus, that we are having His, allowing His, uh, seeing Him revealed in us. That, that only happens in fellowship. Christ can only be revealed in us through our fellowship with Him. Our fellowship with Him is based on our faith in this sacrifice that He gave on our behalf. That's where the, that's where the relationship began. That's where you were justified and before God hailed as forgiven and not guilty when you died with Christ. He died for your sins. You were immersed into Him, baptized into His death, Romans 6, 3. And there's where it all began at Calvary with you and me, praise God. It didn't begin when He walked on this earth and, and performed miracles. It all began for you and me at the cross. There's where we were baptized in 
to Christ, placed into his death. And there, my friend, is where our fellowship with him, the fellowship of his sufferings. There's where we experience the power of the resurrection through our fellowship than what he did to get himself and us to the resurrection. Praise God. He obeyed his father. He endured the death of the cross. And then three days later, he was resurrected. And because we were placed in him on the cross, we were also buried with him and raised to the of life with him because we were already in him at the cross. There's where we began. Our fellowship began with him in his suffering for us. I hope you're getting that today. And, 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 and the way he's revealed to us, in us, is through our fellowship with him. And our fellowship with him, I'm going to say it again, is only through our faith in what he did for us. Fellowship with Christ outside faith in the cross, remember, and I'll say it for the third time, God, Paul said, there is no effect profit from Christ if we fall from grace, if we fall from this place where we fellowship with Him. I didn't say you lose your soul. I said you lose fellowship. There's no more profit, no more effect of Him in your life. And it, then it's just us going through the motions, going through the motions, acting like we still have it all going on. And there's where we step into this, my friend, a form where there's no longer any power. And what happens is he tells his people, those that only have a form, deny the power, we are to turn away from them. They don't become our enemies, but we're to turn away from them. Hallelujah. So here uh, we also see in verse 16 that he says, when Christ begins to be revealed in him, he begins to preach. And 1 Corinthians 1 and 17, very powerful scripture, especially for today in our church world, says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Does that mean uh, Paul didn't baptize? No, because he did. But, but, but here he confirms why God sent him. Can, can I give you another example? God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, with a command to lay down His life for the sins of humanity. But Jesus also healed the sick, raised the dead, opened blinded eyes. Here Paul's just reassuring everyone his main purpose in his calling was not water baptism, was not baptism. It was to preach. The main purpose of Jesus was to die. But yes, He healed the sick along the way. Paul here is reassuring his, his, his listeners, this church, these churches in Galatia, listen, I was not sent to baptize. Oh, I baptized, but I was not sent to baptize. I was sent to preach the gospel. The gospel. Not just to preach anything. The gospel. And don't listen to me today and say, well, that's what God told Paul to preach. He's telling me to preach something else. No, Paul would say this under the unction of the Holy Spirit, if they come and preach any other thing than what I've given you, Paul, to preach, you tell them they are accursed. That means they are away from where I work. They're back under law. They're not under grace. And let me remind those who are ministers today who are listening to me, I don't care who you are, how long you've been in ministry, I don't care. God's not going to, he's not going to, uh, uh, in spite of your ignorance, ignorance you anyway. You can forget that thought. We have concrete scriptures that reveal to us if we move away from the one avenue in which he works, it's over. There is no more effect, no more profit of Christ. If we fall from grace, and grace is our faith, God working in our lives, faith, Christ affecting us, profiting us because our faith remains in one thing only, that sacrifice. And listen, the Word of God must be relayed. Everything you preach must be attached to Calvary. And when men and women rise up and say, oh, don't listen to Him. Oh, they think you, God ain't going to do nothing if you don't say cross, if you don't say uh, crucified with Christ. Can I tell you today, you better not listen to them. You better preach the word in truth and that means how it relates to Christ and how the, the perfect law of liberty 
brings that liberty to you, which is only through your faith in the cross, not you reading a chapter or, or reading a verse and getting excited about it that you've now memorized it or now you've got four or five scriptures put together for your own message. The Holy Spirit's only going to give you truth. And truth liberates, truth confirms. Truth brings about the grace of God in our lives, uh, freeing us, delivering us from the sin that so easily besets us today. And let me tell you what else grace does. It takes you out of false doctrine. And it begins your ministry of preaching the truth, praise God. And there's no man, there's no man yet to be preaching the cross today has not stood up and said, I've wasted many years, many sermons, and I have thrown... Any man who's not willing to get up and say he's preached false doctrine is still not preaching the cross, my friend, because you have to admit and acknowledge that you were not preaching the truth. And when you start preaching the truth, God's Word and truth, you will acknowledge, you will declare that to the people so they will know everything up to that point was not right. Yes, it was the Word of God and God's Word is in truth, but you didn't preach it in truth. Amen. And God's Word can twisted and changed to mean what we want it to mean. And God's Word is truth. And that means it's about the man named Jesus and what he did at Calvary. Praise be to God. It says, but God, Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, unless the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. You see, there it is again. We preach Christ crucified. The wisdom of man's words would come and say, you don't have to say the cross every time you preach. That's a fact. You don't have to say Christ crucified every time you preach. That's a fact. But my friend, you do have to relate the scriptures to Jesus Christ and what he did for you at Calvary. You have to refer to Christ crucified, the message of the cross, the death of Christ, the substitution of Christ, the propitiation of Christ. You have to bring cross in to your message or your message was a message without power. And that's the word of the Lord. The preaching of the cross is the power of God. Not anything else. Hallelujah. Praise God. So Paul says that Christ didn't send him to baptize but to preach the gospel and not to be using the words of wisdom. So many people just want to hear someone who can orate. They just naturally have speaking a, 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 a voice. Ain't got one of them here from Northeast Texas. A little old tiny guy with a high-pitched voice. Listen, I'm not one of them. So I know folks who tune in to hear Brother Curtis, they're not here to look at me for sure, and they're not here to listen to the sound of my sweet voice teaching them in a way. And you know, they we listen, we we gotta get it. We just have to be who we are to present Christ that's being revealed to us and in us to the world, amen, which can only be done according to God's word in truth. We can't use men's words of wisdom. We Listen, when we think that we can come along and get a hold of the purpose-driven life, and that's going to get people uh, uh, to the cross. That's not going to get people to the cross. The message of the cross is going to get people to the cross. You know, and I used to have that book, and, and I used to think that God was pour out on our ministry because now I was knocking on doors every Monday night asking those people are they in church and no I'm not sure well what would we have to do in our church what would we have to change to get you in our church man do you know that's totally out of the will of God you know what you got to do to get people in your church preach the cross the Holy Spirit will bring the people that God desires to be in your church hallelujah or they'll be rejecting him when they reject the message coming from that house praise God Proof that water baptism can, if taught for salvation, make a cross of none effect in one's life. See, look at what this one verse is saying here. Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Colon. That means he's about to explain that right here. Not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. That means when someone comes along and says, you're really not saved lest you water baptize, that's words of wisdom because it's contrary to the Bible that says all we have to do to be, to be saved is to believe. He gives the power to become sons and daughters of God to those who believe on His name. He gives His righteousness unto, upon all, Romans 3, 22 and 23, them that believe, not them that work, not them that do something, them that believe. So man's words of wisdom 
When we avoid God's word in truth, it's no longer God's word in truth when we bring man's wisdom into play and man's wisdom would say you got to add to what Christ did. And Paul says, listen, Christ didn't send me to baptize. He sent me to preach the gospel. And if you look back, it'd be a real good time, and I don't have it in my notes, it'd be a real good time right now to look back and to see what the mission of Paul was to the, to the heathen. You know what? One of the things I'm being reminded by the Lord right now is to, to get them out of darkness, to open their eyes, to deliver them from Satan. Water baptized. Baptism can't do that for you. Only what Christ did at the cross can do that. So when we come along and say, yeah, but you, yeah, 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 okay, I believe that too, but you got to be water baptized. That means we don't understand God's word in truth and we're adding our words of wisdom to that. Are you with me today? I hope you're getting something. I hope this bro program is broadcasting. Uh, it's the first time we're using this little me camera, so I guess we'll find out later. Hallelujah. <laughs> When Christ was being revealed in Paul, Paul began to preach. It's the same for all Christians today to some degree. And I've already said that. I'll say it again. When you get born again, you just start telling folk, man, what happened to you? That's called the Lord being revealed to you in you and you ministering them to other people because there's been a real change in you. And that real change always, it is a manifestation of a like like a, a rock hitting a, a water and sliding across it. Man, when Christ begin He saves you and He begins to reveal Himself in you to you, it's always going to be another phrase through you. If Christ is is being revealed to you, in you, and to you, it's always going to come through you, always. When, when we stop allowing Christ to be revealed through us, it's because He's no longer being revealed to us in us. That's something that can't be stopped. The Holy Spirit, when He's working in our hearts to reveal Christ to us, in us, He's always doing it so that we can be uh, edified, we can grow, we can, we can move on into a place of being perfected called sanctification and grow and be more like Christ. But also, all the time, it is for others. We're to bear fruit. Fruit is for others. It's for others. So I hope you're getting that today. If we aren't sharing Christ, He isn't being revealed in us by us, by the Holy Spirit, because we're more interested in other things. And that's just reality. God's not waiting. Uh, he, he didn't pick you two, and then He waited on 10 years for, I'm going to mess with you, I'm going to wait 10 more years, Curtis. I, I know. No, God is waiting on us. As long as we'll come to Christ by way of the cross, accept His sacrifice for our sins, be born again, the Holy Spirit immediately begins to reveal Christ. Not who you are in this world, but who Jesus is in you. See, the focus is on the one who is in you, who's greater than all those that are in the world. That's the focus. Our problem and our oppression and depression and much of all our problems comes from us being focused on everything that can become greater than us is greater than us because we lose our focus of the one the Holy Spirit's trying to reveal in us who is greater than all our oppression, all our depression, all our problems. Hallelujah. If our focus remains through our faith in the cross, being led by the Spirit through God's Word, God's knowledge in our lives, then our focus remains on who He is. That's why every mountain that pops itself up in front of you, yes, it's us and there may be initial fear, but when you get your focus back to the one who the Holy Spirit's revealing in you, the truth, his name is Jesus, and truth, man, truth brings faith, and when faith comes, faith overcomes that mountain, it will either shrink and you'll walk right in it, or you'll walk over it, or you'll just walk around it, but the grace of God will be there for you to work effect effectively in your life. Praise God. He said in a later in chapter 4 we'll see in verse 19 he writes this my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you do you see this is in the fourth chapter of Galatians and Paul here is talking about listen man I'm going to travail in birth I'm going to travail like a pregnant lady I'm going to travail in birth 
I'm going to keep letting the Holy Spirit reach through me. I'm going to keep reaching for you. I'm not just going to say forget you. God doesn't do that. When we get off track, He keeps reaching. He keeps reaching. No, He can't profit you. He can't affect you anymore with the grace of God because you've fallen from it. But He's going to keep sending letters by Paul. He's going to keep sending ministers. He's going to send a grandma. He's going to send a co-worker. He's working in them. He's working in them. You've not allowed him to work in you any longer by removing yourself from grace through trusting in something other than the cross. But listen, he's still working in other people and they he's going to send them to you just like Paul sent this letter to the churches in Galatia. God's still after you because greater than Thing in the plan of God for men is for him to be able to be in fellowship with us and that comes through our faith and the sacrifice of Christ which makes the fellowship of Christ a possible for us and, and here's the promise with him you really get everything. Romans 8 and 32. If God spared not his only son but delivered him up of the cross how shall he not with him Freely give us all things. Yes, you might be a Christian and you might say, well, I'm with him. I don't know about all this cross stuff, but you know, I, you know, I'm past that. I was saved by faith in the cross, but today I understand that I also have to do these things if I'm going to experience God. You've moved away from grace, my friend, and God is after you. And you may be in church and you may lift your hands. Anybody can do that. But when God is no longer in our lives because we've moved our faith across to other things that have an appearance of right, of what's right, then all God can do at that point is call you home call you back to faith and grace. And that's what he was doing to the churches in Galatia. And really, that's what he's doing today to 99.9% .9 of the church all over the world. He's trying to get his people to come back to the place he works where sin no longer dominates them, where they can experience the freedom, the liberties, the effect and the increase of Christ through faith in his death. It's the only way it happens. It's the only way it comes. And if we're with him, we're with him in heaven. But are we with him today here? See, there is a difference. We're with him. We're in him. We today, right now, through the identification plan of God. Christ there is our intercession. When God the Father looks at the Son, He sees every believer that will ever be in Christ. But you need to hear me. Today, you and I are living on this earth. And we can remove ourselves from Him that called us into this grace. It's in my Bible. It's in your Bible. It's there. Yes, it's settled. We're there. But we can remove ourselves from Him. That means from the grace of God, God being able to work in my life to affect me with the benefits that He so longs to give me. Greater than anything, He wants to be in fellowship with you. And in that fellowship, He will be revealing Christ to you, strengthening that fellowship. And you will, my friend, be experiencing the fruit of the cross, the fruit of Christ, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And others will be affected positively around you just by your simple faith in Him. I thank God for these weekly broadcasts and this study in nations, and, and I thank God for those who tune in and those who really are desiring to learn the Word of God. There are many today who tune in to ministries all over the place because they're famous and they have uh, great this, great music, great name, great all these things. But I'm going to tell you something. These little Churches that are popping up all over the world today. Little store, old grocery stores, old sporting goods stores, old houses, old locker houses, just oh, meeting in living rooms in their homes with four or five people. The power of God is in that place because these people have been brought back through repentance, brought back to their first love to be in fellowship with Christ where He can now be revealed in them and not just everything they're doing pointing to the church they go to, but what He's allowed to do in them and through them to bring forth His fruit. See, it's all about Jesus. It's not about our being. It's not about our denominations. It's all about Jesus. And I thank God for those of you who know that. And God is bringing many out of those institutional, de denominational realms to where the cross is not being preached. 
He will not, in spite of us, respect our ignorance. He says He no longer listen, winks at ignorance, but commands men everywhere to repent. And I thank God for those being raised up. And I'll just say to all those who are ministers watching today, keep preaching the message of the cross. When the devil in your own stinking flesh tries to make you think there's, um, uh, you know, it's just not working. I'm going to tell you, God's always at work when your faith is in the cross. Even when you're waiting on him to do something you think he needs to be doing, he's at work while you're waiting on him. Tune in every week. Please share this, these uh, uh, sessions on your social media. I thank God for you. Love you. Tune in every week. Tuesday nights, check my Facebook page out. Uh, I'm posting a segment on God's Word and Truth. Right now we're talking about the power and the beauty of God's righteousness. And uh, don't forget about these programs live on Friday mornings. And uh, my YouTube page is Curtis Hutchinson 316. My email is Curtis Hutchinson at att.net. And once again, our website is The Crossway Church. God bless you. We love you.